mountain of metal. Look at all these. Look how, how excited he is. In this project video, we test the ballistic capabilities of different grades of aluminum and some stainless steel. Joining us today is my friend Devin, all the way from France. So let's get started. Good hit. That feels yeah, so like satisfying. <laughs> Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing something that's slightly different. I have 11 different samples that we recently went out and shot, me and Devin here, that are comprised primarily of metal. They either have aluminum or steel integrated in them. As we were trying to come up with some different solutions that didn't necessarily rely on ceramics versus rifle rounds, and also trying to compare some other samples of aluminum. Previously on this channel, I've already done a pretty extensive test of 7075. You may remember this guy right here, like I mentioned Devin, because he was available for it. Well, we flew him out from France, all the way from France. He came out and got to shoot the guns for the first time, and uh, we came up with some, I feel, pretty interesting uh, tests and some things that might be relevant to build off of. So, um, have you liked being in America? So far, it has been great. I've been able to test a lot of new things that I would not have really been able to test in France. So, yeah, it has been a very positive experience so far. I liked it. Right, not to mention you wrote in the tank. Clip of that. Shotguns. Tested, of that. Tried some new food. I've been able to be here for the 4th of July to play yeah. fireworks. <laughs> yeah, 4th of that July. That was nice. Yeah, yeah, and flamethrower. <laughs> Flame for as well. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so, anyways, this is a pretty kind of a hot. It kind of might feel like a hodgepodge, but we'll try to break down the exact reason why we selected these things and why we wanted these very specific combinations. What kind of maybe surprised us by the end of these, and really, um, how you could improve upon these different ideas? Because yet again, we're seeing aluminum being quite successful at stopping at least pistol rounds. And that's a very exciting thing because aluminum is quite light and fairly cheap. So let's get started. So the focus of these experiments were around three different alloys of aluminum. 70, 75, 60, 67, and 50, 83. And 304 stainless steel sheet. Some of these samples were just standalone with nothing else added, while other samples were layered with other materials such as high density polyethylene, very high molecular weight polyethylene, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, and polycarbonate plastic sheet. Others had fabrics such as polyester or ultra high molecular weight polyethylene fabric added as backers. Some had porcelain, added as a strike face as well. We were sampling multiple different configurations to compare to previous results shown on this channel and ones that we found elsewhere. All layered samples were duct taped together as we didn't have time to use resins or other types of adhesives to bind them together. As such, we were able to crank out 11 samples in very short order. We did a scaling of ballistic threats for pistols. We started with the 380 and the 38 Special, then on to the 45 ACP, and then the 357 Magnum. For rifles, we used the 223 out of the Mini 14 and the 7.62 by 39 out of the SKS. All ballistic threats were full metal jackets. There were also some tests we've done with the 44 Magnum, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. For now, let's go ahead and get on to the ballistic footage. Mountain of metal. Look at all these. Look how, how excited he is. <laughs> so we're going to start, of course, with the pistol rounds doing 380, 38 Special, 45 ACP, 357 Magnum, and I also have a 44 Magnum out today. So get a pretty nice diverse range of pistol calibers sadly I forgot the chronograph because I'm dumb so however we will still give the full metal jacket and the weight of the projectile so all right 
38 special full metal jackets. Let's take a look. Hit that one. Your plugs came out a little bit. There we go. Second one. Let's see about plate number nine. Oops. Didn't rotate. There we go. Shot a little high. Got her. All right, let's approach. Bulge, but no pass through. Look at that sucker flattened out. Look at that, it just opened that sucker up. There's the impact, no pass through. I don't know what grade aluminum this is. That's a- 5083. 5083, thank you. Right there's the bulge. I guarantee you we flip it over. This is really light stuff, man. And this one was, uh, Devin, do you remember? That's the uh, alumina cast? I suspect it to be 5083 because it is Alka 5. Okay, so these are both 5083? It's supposed to be the same. Okay, cool. Differently that this one is in flat condition, rolled out of the factory, and this one I hammer it down into right. um, curvature, which might have hardened it a bit because it contained manganese, which is a uh, which create which cause the, the alloys to be capable of work hardening. Well, either way, that's a good sign for these grade this grade of aluminum, and of course, this very thin steel plate was able to stop it. Yeah, boy. First time ever shooting a firearm. He's going to aim for that piece of what is it? Sixty. The aluminium at the center, the square one, is I believe fifty eighty three. Okay. Like five. Yeah, but I mean, you know, even if you miss, it's no big deal. And uh, you know how to line up the everything. So, all right, Devin, you're good to go whenever you're ready. There you go. Good hit. Okay, that's it's a bit surprising the, the way you feel the impact of the explosion. Right. It, it feels different than what I expected. Hmm. It's not bad. It's just that um, it feels different. I expected the impact to be both slower but to be painful in the wrist and instead it just shake. Right. So here is the other shot of it. You caught right the edge. edge oh, right. <laughs> but hey man, you still hit, you know, first shot. Because we had some. Yeah, so we had uh, two of those reloads. The primers didn't go. So we'll go ahead and hit it with the 380. And what is it? What are these? Uh, just uh, 380 ACP. Duh. Yeah, aren't those they? Those are. It's it's full uh, full metal jacket, semi wad cutter. Okay. So yeah. 95 here. grain, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, 95 grain. Yep. All right. Cool. Thank you. Just so we have that information. All right. Here we go. Man, this thing is. Uh... There you go. Yeah. That... Man, this thing is. Uh... Yeah, you hit it. Good. See if you can hit that small one. There you go, Devin. Look at you. That was good and square. Yes, so easy to carry. I can put it in my pocket. There we go, boys. Nobody knows I got it. Nobody knows. And it's still strong enough to put someone up. So, yeah, yeah, they stopped the 380. Well, let's move on to. I managed to hit. I'm glad I managed to hit something. All right, let's move on to the 45 ACP. Okay, what am I shooting? Which are those three plates? Either one of them? Yeah, all three of them. Right? Yep. Yep. Like that? Yes, yes, sir. So you caught the edge there. But it still did not tore it apart. It's still, uh, you can see how stop it. Yeah. And then for this one, we should have taken, I think that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, it's very big. Right big yep. boy, big boy. And big look. boy. Oh, that was a small BFD here. Yeah. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. And then the 45 was right here. Yep. And it's still catched in it. Yep. You can see. Yep. <laughs> Big bird. <laughs> unga, <Yeah>. unga. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. You eat, you eat something. <laughs> wow. That's nice. Yeah, that was a bit of the leg came back. Just a bit. Wow. I saw it bounce back. Maybe one, two. 
Actually, the 357 Magnum didn't go through. You heat it with the Magnum? Yeah, this is 357 Magnum. Yep. I, I just wanted, uh, I just was curious if you heat I'm not sure where he hit it at, but he hit it. I think it's there. It might be here. Look at that. Oop. Here. I mean, yeah, but I think that's probably yeah, it right yeah because there. the 45 was here if I remember. Right, yep. So that's the, the Magnum. It has to be the Magnum. Yeah. Oh, it, it stops the Magnum. Damn. Yeah, where's the small piece of metal? It flew small, right it, back it here. It flew right back here. Here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, hit, I tapped it right where the other shot look was. Look at that. So this little piece. Look at that, Devin. It stops the Magnum next to our preview shot, next to our yeah. 380. Next to the 380 shot. Yeah. Right next that, to it. Damn. That's a look at the bolt, but that's fantastic. Is that, is that aluminum? That's yes, aluminum. It's both of, yeah, the, it, I'm surprised. It is a piece of 5083, and I hammered it uh, cold because I don't have a forge, so I just hammered it until it was into shape. And yeah, that's wow, it. That's Six amazing. millimeter of 5083. Good hit. Look at look at that little piece that flew. Did you see it? Yeah, <laughs> I saw it. I will try to shoot my uh, monster one more time. Yeah, go right ahead. Good hit. That feels yeah, so satisfying. It <laughs> does it. <laughs> Good hit. So we shot this plate with uh, all the things up up to 357 Magnum. We began with 48 Special, 380, 45 SCP, and 357 Magnum. The Magnum was stopped, as you can see. But we were not far from a complete penetration. Like it got stopped, but with a lot of BFD, the steel was close to its limit. Right. Uh, therefore, we will forego the 44 Magnum, especially considering that it will be shot with a rifle and so a rifle length barrel, which will make the projectile much faster than the NIJ certification for NIJ 3A. Yeah, it's right around 500 feet per second faster. It's insane. So, yeah, good point. But we're going to still try one on this. Yep, because so, this one held and did not uh, care at all. Like yeah. very few BFD. Yeah, this piece of, uh, aluminum. of aluminum, this like 10 millimeters, like one centimeter thick, less than half inch for American users. Mm. It's closer to 3 eighths, actually, slightly more than 3 eighths of an inch. And uh, yeah, even the Magnum did only get that. That's what yeah. the 3 tip of the Magnum did to that. So, uh... Good Whoa. hit. Ooh. Okay, there it is. We've found the threshold. It's always that damn 44 Magnum. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Look at it. Whoa. Isn't that amazing? That 44 Magnum is just no freaking and, and that's not even full metal jacket. Well, we did something. I think I hit something. Oh, yeah, dead center. Oh, oh. right through both of them. Both! Oh, man, look at that. Don't you love this? All right, so we're going to move on to some rifle rounds for testing some different different grades of aluminum and some different combinations of plastic with steel so we're gonna be starting off with a 7.62 by 39 just a normal full metal jacket and depending on how they fare we will do some other uh, tests if we have the mini 14 <clears throat> and we have some even bigger rounds so all right let's get started all right. You hit it. Oh, it's so satisfying to hit. You hit it. Man. I like this gun. Oh. What? You knocked two down. Go on and hit the other one. Yeah. Oh. Now you feel it. Like, I, I, I feel it because of your first and so on. I think it's not like So, something survived? Um. This survived somehow. I don't know where it. Back face is here. Right. Back face is here. So yeah, it stopped in that. So something got stopped, I guess. Yep. This one number six failed. Okay. Oh man. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> Look at that guy. <gasps> oh no. You can, you can see the fragments here. Yeah. Oh, dude. 
Actually, like actually, that, that's what is funny with 7075 is that the failure mode is a plugging, a brittle plugging. You see, the metal is not pierced technically. Yeah. It's not make a clean hole. He just take a chunk of the metal and bring it with him. Yeah, and it got caught up into the edge. I'm kind of curious, maybe because it was shot here, but it's not a lot of, not a very big sample. Yeah, we will have to, to retry that uh, that method with something else later yeah. on another day. I mean, yeah. feel free to retry if you want. On your side. Yeah, I might do it with some uh, more layers of ultra high because this yeah. was only 15, maybe if 15. It was 24, yeah. and maybe a bigger sample because it's yeah. fairly close, like the thing. Yeah, exactly. But, but still, interesting. It's a an half failure, and I believe on a bigger sample with more ultra high, we could have stopped it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And so this one failed, uh, and yeah, that you one can failed. See the way it failed. Yeah, it failed. It failed. This one failed, and this one failed. Okay. Okay. So, so we had another try on this one and this one. Yep. Same. I yeah, heard it come back at me. A piece of it hit me. And I... Whoa! I thought Good. I left it. Okay. The ceramic blew right off. So what happened? The ceramic actually blew off, and look at the hole in that. Whoa! So it's kind of sad. Perfect. We'll go try with five, five, six. Maybe. Maybe we'll do something different. All right. Let's check that one. That stopped. It stopped. Not sure far it from going through, like last layer, yeah. I believe. Yeah, but it still stopped it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that one. Oh, that one is a failure. Like you can see. see the... Well, actually, it, I don't think it went through. Look at that. Oh, I, I thought it was the back. I thought it was the back. That's why I expected. Oh no, that's the that's, that's the front. front. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. That stopped it. Nice. And here, this one was a failure. <laughs> It was right there. Yep. So, and then let's check this one out. This was with the extra check face on that. Dude, that the ultra high molecular weight polyethylene with those two pieces of aluminum or those two pieces of steel stopped though. So. Oh man, man, but, so close, so close. So this is out of this mini 14. It pushes about 3000 feet per second. It's a 55 grain full metal jacket boat tail. Uh, and here's the IMR 4895 powder, 24.5 grains, CCI primers. Yep, so these are home loads. All right, cool. There you go, you hit it. Oh, yeah. He's a We tested. This one again, and we had another another pass through even through that. So the 556 five, was able to make it through this plate. Second shot on this one, it stopped. That's cool. All right, so that one actually worked. Again, the big thick piece of aluminum stopped. We shot this, and that blew through. So cool, cool. 148 grain, 7.62 by 54R. First shot out of the Mosin. Maybe you can pull it out. Just, yeah, that whole plastic wants to come out. There she is. Case. All right. That's potent. And you got yourself your failure. It is fine? Yes, sir. Okay. So, yeah. It's, it's not yet an IJ3. Because NRJ3 is the fluor weight M80, and I think the FMG 64R should be close enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we are bit we, we are ghost free because we stopped the 762 by 49, but we are not NRJ3. All right, so this is one of the small sample plates that Devin had done. This is a 7075 T6 with a softer backer. What is it? 6061 T6 for the backer. Yeah. And. Uh, so he wanted something that was essentially just aluminum to see if he could reach the, the threat levels at a center plate. So this is just uh, this polyester was a wrap job to pretty much keep and catch all the spalling that can happen with metal. And as you can see, it worked quite well. Let's see all the jacket 
fragments that are just stuck in the polyester curtain. There we are. Look at that big plug. Oh, it's beautiful. It stopped right there, though, on the more ductile backer. But look at the size of that 7075 plug. That is absolutely gorgeous. All right, so we're going to talk about a few of the different failure modes of different metals, in particular aluminum, because that's what most of the testing today was on. And Devin, can you show us the different from like uh, delamination, um, plugging, brittle and ductile failures? Can you like kind of demonstrate and show? Sure. We will begin uh, by the plugging. For example, you see this is a quarter inch piece of 6061 in the T6 treatment. And basically, it was hit by a 44 Magnum, traveling at a high speed from a rifle. And basically, what you can see is that uh, when it went through, it pushed uh, the part of the metal that was in contact with it, got pushed through. There was such an energy transfer that the part of the metal that was, that was in contact with the projectile got uh, torn apart from the main metal plate and became in itself a new projectile. Right, it just popped right out. It so popped it, out and was sent away. And this is what when you describe it as like plugging because it's just a perfect plug where the 44 Magnum was pushing against that with such force and it sheared across that. And it's got a great, like you can really visualize because it fit perfectly in there. Man, that's so cool. All right, and uh, you were talking about delamination with the 7075? Yep. Yes, this one was a sample of 7075. In its T6 heat treatment, it was 15 millimeter thick, which is five inch of an inch for American users. And basically, uh, this one uh, did not have a stiff backer. The backer was UHMVP, so no structural support to the plate. And what you see is that you had this small piece that was sand, similar to a plugging failure mode, but the difference, and you can see here, you can see some layers yeah, and you I can see, see that the shape of the plug also is different you can see that near the back it is bigger than near the front you see much more Let's see if we can get a good focus of it no it decided that uh, everything but my hand should be focused on <laughs> come on <laughs> it's okay yeah, we'll, take, we'll take a picture later there we go yeah we can we can insert some now nah, it finally focused so what he's talking about is, you see the splitting. He's a splitting. Along there. That's the effect of the delamination. So because basically, the plate being a rolled plate, the crystals have been stretched out. And so it creates almost layers, like ogres and onions. <laughs> like ogres and onions. And so basically, you can see it here. You can see it here. You see this layer, this piece of layer? Mm -hmm. And you can see, like, the entry hole at this size fairly modest. On the back, you see the main hole, and you see the enormous amount of metal that is missing. Right. The, the, this is a delamination, both a plugging and a delamination, both happened at the same time. Right, and this one had it, but it had a stiffer backer. Yes, so. this one uh, was shot by the same projectile, a 7.62 by 39, so both were shot, both are the same, and were shot by the same thing. The only difference is the backer. This one had an, a different backer. It had a quarter inch, or 6 millimeter thick, 60-61 T6 aluminum right, so as a backer. Yeah. And the backer, basically, being stiff enough, it provided structural support, and so the plug uh, could not go through this support and so was stuck in place, was kept in place and so could not detach from the main plate. But you can still see here, it almost detached. Right. It's, it's only the backer that kept it in place and that, right. that prevented the, the complete penetration from happening. That's fantastic. Awesome, man. I appreciate you uh, explaining that. So thank you very much. Alright guys, this is finally the end of the video, so a couple things, we want to cover some of the final thoughts. Uh, Devin, when it came to the aluminum and uh, for pistols, what did you think about that the 5083 composition? How did that perform? It, pe it performed better than my expectation. Uh, I expected the 45 to be stopped, but I did not expect the 357 Magnum to be stopped. And it right. was stopped with an, an acceptable BFD. 
Yeah, especially with the thin one that you had cold forged where you had hammered it into a shape, indicating that if you really wanted to, you know, maybe make a full suit of armor out of it, I mean, it's incredibly lightweight. How much was it per square foot? Did we estimate? Uh, not per square foot, but we have the cubic centimeter at 2.6, so uh, which means that a sapi plate, uh, before cutting the corner, is 750 square centimeters. Uh, the thickness being 6 mm is 0.6 cm. So we are looking um, uh, basically 750 square centimeters by 0.6. And then you have the volume, multiply that volume by 2.6, and you've got the weight in grams for the right. plate, which is not that heavy. Yeah. Should have factored that. <laughs> we added that to the video. Yeah, well, well, right here, I'm going to just add it. You'll see the number. That's how much for it. <laughs> but the basic idea is that we could theoretically create, you know, everything from a pauldron to side plates the like that would easily be able to handle 9mm and 357 Magnum. Yes, it can't quite reach the 44 Magnum. We were testing with pretty spicy ammunition, but I still think that it probably would be fairly close, but I think you would definitely need to eat, add some form of composite backer or thicken up those plates, which of course bulks up the weight. But I think if, it would be fun to take that at a quarter inch and dial in how much composite you needed behind it, because it, it is very, very lightweight. Um, so that's one thing with the pistols. As far as the rifles are concerned, the stainless steel one that had high density polyethylene and then we slapped a ceramic on it and it was able to handle the 7.62 by 39. Was that interesting? How did you feel about that one? Because that was one of your designs. Yeah, the one with a lot of layers. Uh, this one expected, uh, my expectation matched the reality. I expected this with the free layer of AGP and the free layer of stainless steel, that without a ceramic strike face, it would not reach the rifle rated. But as I expected, just a single layer of ceramic made it enough. Because this multi layer pattern is good at swallowing the energy. Mm. It's not just good because the metal is too soft at breaking up the bullet. But once you add a tiny bit of ceramic in front of it, the breaking is done, and so this act, uh, this backer can uh, really swallow the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, um, I think the, so the that and the uh, the really thick piece of aluminum, the six hundred, the six thousand sixty sixty one yeah. T six. Yeah, that one was pretty interesting. That it was, did well. Yeah, it did well for how thick it was. I mean, obviously it's you know, a massive piece of metal, but it, it was actually fairly lightweight. I think we actually weighed that one and it came out to being like seven or eight pounds or something like that. Yes, slightly above seven pounds for, yeah. for a 10 by nine inches, which means that for a SIP plate, we are looking at something that is not above eight pounds. But it'd be very thick. But at the same time, you know, I mean, it reached 7.62 by 39 and the uh, 223. Two, three. We quite, I, I kind of like that idea potentially for a vehicle insert like vehicle plates exactly personally but all right guys well that's there you have it you know hopefully you enjoyed this content and if you did make sure to like share and subscribe huge thank you of course to Devin for coming out all the way to America and shooting up stuff with us and helping build these plates you can also check out his channel even though he you know speaks in the ha 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 but I have some video in English. He has, a, he has a few videos, especially for a helmet that he built and other things he's working on. So, and I imagine when we cover some more metal in the future, he'll be back on to do some voiceover work and explain some stuff. So, a lot of new stuff coming out, guys. I have Liba and a bunch of other projects, but we will cover that at a later date. Till then, see you all in the next one. Take care. Here comes Devin.